This is a, a sea trout fly that's served me really well over the years. Historically, I always tied it in tube format. Here's one. I, I usually keep a little box actually. If a fly is producing really well or has produced really well or caught me a fish that um, was particularly memorable, I tend to put them in uh, a special box just to keep them as uh, as original patterns to, to, to copy essentially. Anyway, this is one from that box uh, which has definitely been through the wars in some fish, uh, some fish or other. Again, traditionally I would have tied it on tube flies. Oh, sorry, on a tube. For some reason I've drifted away from tube flies over the years and uh, gone more on to uh, stinger, uh, you know, tandem, seeker weapon type setups rather than um, rather than tubes. But uh, pretty much a fashion. I'm sure I'll come back to them again one day. I've got a 35 millimeter intruder shank. You can tie these uh, Waddington style as well if you prefer. I don't like the the leverage point on Waddingtons. Uh, there's ways of working around it, obviously, but uh, anyway, I prefer working them as intruders. So we've got a 35 mil intruder shank. You can do the 25 mil as well. Um, thread 10O Vivas Black. Start by attaching that onto the onto the shank, and as always, avoid tying in on that uh, head section to begin with just avoid all bulk when you can just tie a little base of thread down the body what you're going to then do is I've got some um, Senyo intruder wire in black and to that I'm going to attach so that's the wire got some Senyo uh, standard Truder wire, and then I've got some um, partridge intruder hooks in red, uh, size one, size one or size two, uh, either or will be fine. Just m measure it up to size of the to the size of the shank. I'd probably say size one is it is perfect for this one. That's all you do with the wire is. Cut a small section, probably six inches or so. Form a, a point in the wire and try and crimp it down slightly because that point is going to have to pass through the eye of the hook. So you want that to be narrow enough to push through the eye of the hook. So that should be fine. So all we do, bring in that hook, tighten it down, tighten that wire down and then just tease it through. That's so all you do then, pass that loop you've created over the hook, like so, pull in tight, and then you're left with that mount. You can manipulate this slightly. Uh, you need the up eye Otherwise, the the wire kicks off in different oh the hook kicks off in different directions. Uh, the up the up eye is perfect, and these intruder hooks are made for this. Uh, then display that the two wire sections. Try and get them either side of the shank, like so. Measure it up. I don't want this trailing too far back. In fairness, it'd be a pretty big fly otherwise. So just around there. When you're happy, bring in your thread and secure it off. You can make sure that everything's riding after a couple of turns, securing turns, make sure that hook is riding where you want it to, right down the middle. Now's the time to do this. It's pretty difficult to do it at the end, so just take a little bit of time just to make sure everything's as it should be. I'm happy with that. Okay, I'm just going to push that down into the vise there. I'm not going to catch myself. You can also invert this if you wanted to. Um, actually, quite often I will invert the hook. So rather than have it pointing down, I'll actually have it pointing up into the wing. That's totally your prerogative though. Take the two sections of wire down. What we're going to then do, I'm going to pass both sections in through the eye and down underneath. Just pull them tight underneath. And tie over them. That's just going to create a 
really secure mount that's not going to slip anywhere take that down like so so snip off the wire sections the excess come in snip them off like so and tie over them just be careful with your thread at that point it can free so the body for the rib we've got some red holographic tinsel you can see there take a nice length of that and then the the first body is going to be black floss it's a fairly long body so do take a decent amount of floss and then I'm going to bring these in together and introduce the two together align the two tips bring them in and tie them down like so take the thread all the way back down towards the head so first down is the black floss so just take that in touching turns all the way up the body keep going covering up all of the shank or the wire that might be showing through take that up take it up towards the head section again stopping just shy of that head section otherwise you're just going to add unnecessary bulk tie that off like so and then we're going to bring in the red holographic tinsel and that's going to be in the opposite direction just to lock everything down pull that as tight as you dare and then just even turns up the body even turns all the way up take your time just to give that nice even segmentation when you get to the head section take a couple of locking turns when you're happy double that tinsel up just secure it in nice and tight so at this point I'm just going to cut that off cut that off at this point you need to basically secure that body you've got a couple of choices either super glue over or uh, like a UV resin or something over that over that body just to protect it just for the sake of this video to make things a little bit quicker I'm just going to put a, a quick swipe of super glue because otherwise the it'll take ages to try just to secure it I'm just going to give it a quick dab down so that's that um, underwing or oh, sorry not underwing false hackle you got a couple of different options. If you're fishing a smaller version, mm -hmm. I would definitely utilize um, I would utilize uh, red hackle. Uh, but in this instance, it's quite a long fly. I've actually got some nyet uh, nyet fur in red. Um, I use a lot of this stuff uh, for my pike flies, but it does actually uh, work well for this type of stuff as well. So cut off uh, a decent pinch. It's got a nice tapering. It's got a nice natural tapering. You can use squirrel, you can use Arctic fox, whatever, but again, I find the eye at the length of it. It's just a, a, a pretty robust material, natural material as well. So I'm going to flip the fly over. This is going to be on the underside. Measure that back. It's going to be fairly long. I want it getting back to about halfway down the length of the uh, of the trailing hook when you're happy switch hands pinch and loop and tie that in nice and secure and then turn the vise back so that's my riding down nicely underneath snip off the the excess and snip it as tight as you can to the shank 
like so. So the upper wing is, or the, um, you got the false hackle or the underwing section here. The top section is going to be Arctic Fox. So in this type of length, you got to be careful because the what will happen is the Arctic Fox is pretty soft and it will spin. So what I tend to do, I tend to put a little bit of bucktail, just a few strands of bucktail, just to cradle the the softer fur above. So that's all I do, a little pinch. Uh, I've taken just a bunch of um, bucktail here. It's going to strip out the shorter fibres. Just want a little pinch of of the bucktail to cradle it, like so. Don't need too much of it. again. That's all this is doing is cradling that softer wing that's going to be on top of it. There you go. So measure that up and this is obviously going to be a much longer wing towards the end so I don't like really showing uh, the trailing hook so I like going a little bit further than the trailing hook. So introduce that up when you're happy again switch hands pinch and loop and secure it down like so. Pull nice and tight don't worry about that splaying again that's what that should be doing because it's going to be supporting and propping up the the softer wing above snip off those little uh, the excess so then we got the the arctic fox wing over i don't know if there's a name to this fly by the way it's just a yeah black and red just go to sea track colors really so it's measure up a, a wing just make up a nice wing of arctic fox that's suitable to the length that we're working with here just gonna here we go don't go too heavy yeah you don't want too much bulk in these flies either snip off there what you need to do then is with arctic fox you know get rid of a lot of that really fine under fur there's a lot of stuff that just adds bulk and doesn't you don't need it in that wing a little bit too much wing material and then roll it you know if you've got it if it's starting to curve in one direction just to give you uh, a more uniform wing rather than curving in one direction or the other just roll roll it around till you're happy like so. Let's bring it up and measure it. So it's protruding just slightly further back than the bucktail, just a little bit further. When you're happy, switch fingers, come in secure. A few really tight securing turns. You can see now that's brought that top wing down. Like so. I'm going to snip off the waist. Overwing is going to be um, red holographic tinsel. Got some red holographic tinsel. This is really fine stuff. So I'm probably going to take four strands, which I'm going to double. So you'll have eight strands in total. So. Like so, and the same as normal, just take it around the thread, take it behind, up and over, and that will help you drop it in on top of the hook, on top of the shank. Measure it up the middle, make sure that it's riding right down the middle, like so. Comb it back, and that's it done. Now, you want these fibers. Just finishing in different lengths, so just cut cut them in different lengths. You don't want them all finishing at the same length. You don't want them really going further than the the Arctic fox wing either, so don't don't allow them to go too far back. Okay. 
see the fly coming together now. So all that's left is jungle cock cheeks and it's got two to select a couple of eyes that's matching up. It's a fairly big um, big shank so you do want eyes to complement that. They're like spot on. Just take a couple strip off the the base of the jungle cock which you just left with the feather just do that to the other one and then I'm going to run these right up the center of the the shank I'm going to measure one in a couple of turns flip that over right down the center happy with that a couple of turns So all we do then is bring the stems back around and that's just going to secure those jungle cock cheeks in so they don't pull out. That's all that's left to do then, just take the thread down around the eye just to finish that. thread has slipped a bit there. Just finish that head off neatly like so. And then trim off the stems of the jungle cock and that's the fly finished so all that's left to do now is to whip finish and we're done so it's going to whip finish there and obviously then varnish at the end so I hope you've enjoyed that. Definitely want to take a new box, whether it be in in a shank form like this, uh, you know, long shanks, uh, stinger setups, or on tubes. Definitely a fly to to take with you next time you're going sea trout fishing. And uh, when you do, I hope they bring you luck. You can see the the overall effect of that fly. See that holographic running down the back and that nayat underneath I tie them probably from that length and down yeah that's a pretty big fly but yeah not too big for a, for a sea trout that is for sure but yeah tie a few up and uh, I hope they bring you luck tight lines <laughs>